Hey guys, Tommy with Elevation Every Weekend here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna do a quick overview and compare and contrast the two most extreme bikes on the market, the triathlon bike and the fat bike. If you look at cycling in a continuous line, with the left side being road oriented and the right side being non-pavement oriented, you have a vast array of bikes available and they are more niched down than they ever have been before. Possibly dead center would be a gravel bike, flat bar bike path bike, or a mild hardtail 29er. All of these will ride fairly well on pavement, but can also still handle mild cinder bike paths or light dirt and gravel riding. The medium sized tires make for a comfortable and stable ride, which is generally accessible for mainstream and entry-level riders. And just to the left of that center portion of those bikes, you have more road-oriented bikes, which are gonna have smaller tires and less tire clearance. And just to the right would be other hardtail mountain bikes that'd be a little more adept at dirt and even some light trail use. The further left you go, you get into more pure road bikes, especially race and aero road bikes. And the further right you go, you get into much more aggressive hardtails. And then of course, transition into the full suspension side of things, which are the most complex bikes on the market. And to the furthest extreme on the left, you have the time trial or triathlon bike as you see here. These bikes are pure pavement machines not designed for use on gravel or dirt in any way. It has by far the most extreme frame design for aerodynamics and the most challenging geometry and riding position of any bike. And something I feel that is well worth mentioning, it is the least diverse bike you can buy. It can be a handful to handle and it's definitely not for the novice and in some ways can actually be quite harsh riding and uncomfortable or at least it'll take some effort to make it a comfortable ride. And switching over to the opposite end of the spectrum all the way to the right side would be the fat bike with by far the largest tires on the market these are also typically the heaviest bikes around and they're the only bikes capable of doing things like riding in softer snow and sand and also of note in direct comparison to the time trial bike is the fat bike is probably the most diverse bike you can buy as it essentially can be ridden in any terrain you could ride a bike in also counter to the triathlon bike the fat bike is typically very easy and comfortable to ride and they're actually a very stable option for beginners due to that huge tire volume like all bikes, there's a fair amount of variation within their individual segments. But let's flip the camera around and take a look at these two bikes, as each represents a good example of each distinct segment. Okay, starting to the left is my 2020 Giant Trinity Advanced. It is a full carbon frame and fork designed explicitly for aerodynamics and maximum power transfer and speed. The tubes are very thin and deep section, and it's a very stiff bike designed to really transfer power through to the road. It has an extremely steep head tube angle at about 71 degrees and it is designed to be ridden in the aero position which is definitely the most unique riding position of any bike and also the most challenging. It's the rare bike where the rider's weight is almost close to a 50-50 distribution over the front and rear. As most bikes your weight is biased to the rear. One thing I noticed when I started riding this bike is if I look straight down when I'm in the aero position my eyes look straight down over the front axle so that just gives you some sense on how far forward you are on a bike like this. Generally speaking though most of the parts on this bike are just road bike parts like if you look at the drivetrain it is just standard road bike fare the wheels and the axles are all just standard road bike spec probably the most unique aspect is going to be the handlebar area and you can see the cockpit is designed to be ridden in the aero bars and you do have some unique brake levers and bar end shifters but otherwise it's pretty much standard road bike spec and while you may see similar aero wheels on some aero or performance race oriented road bikes, you almost always see fairly aerodynamic wheel sets on time trial bikes as it's an essential aspect of the bike. And these aren't even really all that extreme at 55 millimeters deep. They can go much deeper and you'll often will see a full disc uh, on the rear wheel. And with its lighter weight carbon frame and quality part spec, this bike is still fairly light at about 20 or 21 pounds and much higher end versions can certainly get lighter. Now let's shift gears and focus on the fat bike a little bit. This is my 2020 Surly ice cream truck. It's proven to be one of the most capable fat bikes on the market and really exemplifies the segment with its rigid frame and fork design and maximum tire volume. This bike happens to be a steel frame, which all Surly bikes are, but fat bikes commonly also come in aluminum and of course carbon frames as well. Most fat bikes these days come with pretty common cross-country mountain bike geometry, though some are following some of the current trends and really going a little more progressive with the slacker head tube angle and shorter chain stays. The ice cream truck kind of actually falls in between as it has a 68 degree head tube angle, which is not too bad, especially for a rigid bike. For most people, really the biggest adjustment to riding a fat bike is the wider Q factor, which is the distance between the pedals. As you can see, it's a 
much wider distance. And that's just to accommodate the much larger tire in the rear and have clearance for it. Most fat bikes these days use very common mountain bike parts, such as the drivetrains, the brakes, and the accessories. And really the only major alteration is what's needed to accommodate the much larger tire size. So this bike here happens to have a very standard Shimano 1x12 SLX drivetrain, which is standard mountain bike drivetrain, standard Tektro mountain bike brakes. I do have a dropper seat post on it, which again is very standard mountain bike fare. And the bike actually came with standard mountain bike flat bar, but I actually have upgraded to the Ren Perseverance Adventure Bar. I'll link down below if you want to find out more about this, but it's not really anything specific to a fat bike in general. While some higher end carbon fat bikes can get pretty light and be under 25 pounds, most of them are on the heavier side and will be the heaviest bike in the manufacturer's line. And this ice cream truck comes in at about 35 or 36 pounds as is, so it is a fairly heavy bike, not too far from twice the weight of the time trial bike. So let's kind of shift gears back to the time trial bike and talk about the purposes of this bike. So as I've already kind of mentioned, the time trial bike or the triathlon bike is designed for speed and aero efficiency. The speed aspect is more targeted to the bike racing side of things, which would be for shorter time trial events, emphasizing maximum effort and to go as fast as possible against the clock in a fairly short distance, usually under an hour. And for the triathlon side of things, you're typically looking at much longer distances in those races as a full Ironman bike is about 110 miles. So for even the best pros in the world, that's over four hours on the bike. And the target for the bike is about maintaining sustained power output for a long distance as efficiently as possible, which yields the shortest time in the bike split. So again, the time trial triathlon bike is not very versatile. It's very targeted for use on these things. But that said, even though I have yet to do any racing of any kind, I do enjoy riding the bike and it's still a ton of fun to go fast. Currently, time trial bikes are typically pretty expensive compared to most other bikes. These days, they generally only come in carbon frames. And as the companies invest more and more R&D, to make them more aero and efficient. The prices just keep going up. This model, brand new, lists for about $2,700 from Giant. And that's essentially the entry level of the market, whatever company you're looking at. And then once you start adding other features and aero wheels and things like that, obviously the prices go up from there. Fortunately, I was able to find this bike used and I also found the wheels used. So my total investment on this bike is probably around $2,700. So let's go ahead and shift back over to the ice cream truck on the fat bike side of things. The fat bike is designed primarily primarily for types of riding that no other bike can do, such as riding in snow and winter conditions and even sand conditions. But even for these targeted uses that most people associate them with, they're still very versatile bikes. And if you've watched any of my prior videos, you have seen I've demonstrated on my channel, they can be adopted for other types of riding, such as more general adventure riding, trail use, and I've even gone the aero route on my Salsa Bear Grease. And as I kind of showed you already, the Ren bars also have aero cups on them to benefit from that aerodynamic aspect. The ice cream truck has about the largest tire volume of any fat bike on the market currently. They're 26 inch wheels with 4.8 inch tires. And you can see uh, they definitely have plenty of mass to give you maximum traction and flotation in whatever terrain you're riding. So despite my experience riding this bike in Rocky Mountain winters and the capability I've demonstrated with this bike in the snow, I have also found this bike to be extremely capable in the summer as I've used it to ride and descend some of the gnarliest terrain in the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Most fat bikes run in price ranges very similar to that of hardtail mountain bikes. So that means you can generally get a pretty decent fat bike for around $1,500. But just like hardtail mountain bikes, you can certainly spend thousands of dollars if that's what you want to do and go for a really high-end carbon fiber bike. So there is my overview of two of the most extreme bikes you can buy today. So with all of that said, I do find both bikes to be extremely fun in their own way. Oddly, riding these bikes on back-to-back -back days really makes me appreciate the other. If you have followed my channel for any period of time though, you will know that I definitely find a decent fat bike is great for most people. And in my opinion, still the most consistent fun you can have on any bike, which is why I've dedicated so much uh, time and effort on my channel and in my riding to fat bikes. With that said though, I've always been infatuated with the time trial bike and while the time trial bike does require much more focus and technique to ride well I also find it very fun and rewarding to ride well so now that you've had this overview with both of these bikes which one would you choose drop that down in the comments below and if you have any other questions or thoughts definitely drop those down in the comments as well and if you found the video entertaining or interesting in any way please like the video as it does really help out it lets YouTube know that you're finding value in my content and want to keep seeing it my summer plans and adventure season are really starting to ramp up so we're gonna be getting out there 
here real soon. So if you want to follow those things on my various mountain, fat, adventure, and now time trial bike, definitely subscribe. It's the best way to make sure you don't miss anything that I have coming. And before you go, I did link some other videos down in the description below, so definitely check those out. So lots more on the way. Thanks a lot and have a great day.